Wait, so you're saying that if like CB and BA are congruent, and CD and DE are congruent, then that means that they're parallel? Then, then it means that BD is parallel to AD. Okay. Also, if this is parallel, then these are these are congruent. Okay, now, um, sorry, 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 sorry. The fact that these are congruent doesn't make it parallel. Okay. What makes it parallel is the fact that because um, these can be congruent and this can be somewhere else, but because these are congruent and those are congruent, that makes it parallel. But just because it's parallel doesn't mean it's the mid segment. The mid segment is because these are congruent. Uh, it's the equal distance. It's in the middle. Got it. In the middle. The midpoint of both of these connected. Got it. Okay? So, let's do some quick, simple math. If this is 18, you wouldn't say this is 36. It's obviously not double, it's half, so it's what? Okay. If this is 5x and this is 70, what is this length? What is this length? 35. So what is x? 7. Okay. So listen. Half of 45 is 22.5, okay? So this is 22.5, right? Yeah. So what is that? 23.5 minus 1 to get 22.5. Also done. What? Wait, so there's a formula. It's right there. What? There's a formula. The formula is this is half of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So whatever half of this is, 22.5 equals x minus 1. So you say it. 22 and a half equals x minus 1, right? How would you find x? Rules 1 plus 1. Yeah. Okay. Notice 11 minus 1 is 10. 10 is 2 times 5. This is pretty simple, right? How, how would you solve this? You know that this is what? How much? 10, right? 10 equals x minus 1. Don't try to do it in your head. You're going to mix it up and you're going to mess it up. Just say 10 equals x minus 1. Plus 1, plus 1. Yeah? And try to do it in your head. You might subtract 1 and say 9. Okay, so listen, here is, okay, here's a picture from your book, right here, here's you, okay, I'll cut off a little bit. So it says, find HE, right? Okay. So it says, uh, E, D, and H are midpoints of T, U, V. That tells you that this is a what? A mid segment. This is a mid segment to this, and this is a mid segment to that. Mm. Because the midpoints. If they're mid, if they're midpoints, that means these are congruent. Yes. If this is a midpoint, those are congruent. So therefore, the connection is a mid segment. The mid segment is the connection of two midpoints. Just hold on. Is this the middle? 
having a prestige of concurrent. Is this the middle? How do you know? Because these are the same. A mid segment is the midpoint, the connection of two midpoints. So it says E, D, and H are midpoints of T, U, V. So E, D, and H are all midpoints of that triangle. Okay? Now, if U, V is 80, what is H, E? Half of 80, yes? Okay? Now, look. T, V, Sandra? TV is 100. What is ED? 50. See, this is three points. Right? Half. We're just mid segments or half? Say it in your head. Half. Mid segments or half? Say it So parallel segments. UW is parallel to TX. Uy is parallel to Vx. Okay? So, if this is 30, this is 60. If this is 25, this is 50. What would this be? 42. Because this is 21. Double 21 is 42. Now it starts to get a little bit fun. Okay. This is where it can you can get lost, you can get messed up. You can never, I repeat, you can never solve an equation with two variables. You need two equations to solve an equation with two variables. Because then you can substitute. Now notice, y is 2 times y equals 2x plus 1. 2 times y equals 2x plus 1. Yes, you can't solve that. However, you can solve 3x minus 6 equals 2x. And this is what's going to confuse you guys or mess you up about mid segments. So you have to pay attention. x is not equal to 3x minus 6, they're not the same. This is half of this. You can either say one half times this equals this, or you can say two times this equals that. Two x's equals three x minus six. That is not something that I can necessarily say, all right, here's the formula, you do this. I'm telling you that you have to, to use your logic. I can tell you a simple formula, which is two times the smaller is always equal to bigger. You understand? Two times the mid segment is always equal to the base. And that's what I have up, up at the very beginning when I did two times the number. Andrew and then Julian. Uh, but how did you get 3x? This is given to us. Oh, okay. This is the question. Okay. This is the question. 2x equals 3x minus 6. So we would say. Cookies and you reduce the flour and you reduce 
the sugar, or you reduce the flour and you increase baking soda, and then there's changes. Which one caused the change? You don't know. You don't know which one caused what change. The baking soda caused something, the, the, you know, maybe less flour caused something, but you don't know what it is because you changed two things. That's why you can only really change one thing at a time to understand what the difference is. Okay, so there's your unsolvable, because there's two variables. So what is it, what are we going to do? We're going to solve one with one variable, and then substitute it into the other one with two variables. So we're going to say 2x equals... 2 times x equals 3x minus 6. Okay, so we have x equals 6, 3x minus 6. Do I even need to substitute it in here? I already know that this is what? 12. Double. Right? Uh, oh yeah. This is double. 2x is this. Yes. So then could you just write in the beginning that 12 equals 3x minus 6 and then just solve for that? Well you don't know that until you find 6. We found 6. And then we then we just know that that's 12 is so double. Oh, right. We had to solve for six first. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna substitute this. So two y equals two six plus one. Two y equals twelve plus one. Two y equals thirteen. section, in center, circumcenter, orthocenter, um, median, all of those are related to which bisector you're talking about. Yes? Perpendicular bisector means it's perpendicular and it bisects. Perpendicular means 90 degrees, right angles. Bisects means cut in half. An angle bisector means that it cuts an angle in half. If you had a, uh, a piece of cheesecake, would you want whoever's cutting it to do the perpendicular bisector or the angle bisector? Angle. The angle bisector, right? If you do the perpendicular bisector, you can have a piece of cake like this and it's just going to be cut like that. Jalopy. Okay? Now. An angle bisector, there is something about it that we haven't learned yet. 
if you have an angle bisector, at any point along the line, at any point along the line, if you find the distance from that, meaning the perpendicular line to the bisector, those distances will be equal. Once again, anywhere along this line, if you draw a 90 degree line, a perpendicular line, and then you connect or cross the angle bisector, you will be equal distant from that line. A, 40, a 90 degree angle is going to give you the uh, the equal distance. How do you know if something's equal distance if they're both 45 degree, uh, 90 degree angles to that line? Okay, let me explain what we're doing here. Because of this, Alex, these are congruent or equal. So then we can say 5x equals 2x plus 24. Because it's an angle bisector, these distances are equal. Yes. Perpendicular bisector cuts a line in half. This line goes infinity, so it's a ray. This is a ray. So these are not perpendicular bisectors. This is an angle bisector. From the ray of an angle to the angle bisector will be equal distance from an equal ray to that angle bisector. So this is the same as this, and this is the same as that. So you see, 5x equals 2x plus 24. 3x equals 24, x equals 8. Okay? So, Notice, this is congruent to that. What? It's 10 on both sides. What is x? 2x equals what? x plus 20. So x equals 10. It's, a, it's an angle bisector. Now, conversely, conversely means flip it. If it's the angle bisector, I told you, if this is true, then these are congruent, yes? So therefore, if these are congruent, then this is what? The angle bisector. So these are congruent angles. It's kind of like isosceles. We're not proving, so we're not saying why. It's important to know why, but we're not having to say our reason. Just solving out. Yes. I say this.
couple basics about triangles that are important to know. If we have three sides, A, B, C, the hypotenuse is always opposite the 90, right? Just like we did in hypotenuse leg. Also, we have Pythagorean theorem. Any right triangle, you can say this square plus this square equals this square. That's Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse is always C squared. This only works with right triangles, okay? Now, here is a very common right triangle, 3, 4, and 5. You can also have 6, 8, and 10. Any combination of these, multiple, multiplied, like multiples of these numbers, works. So like 3 times 10, 30, 40, 50. Okay? Now, um, when you look at a triangle like this, I know this looks like a lot of complex uh, writing. What I want you to see right now, though, is if I have sides like 8 and 17, I can say 8 squared plus 17 squared equals whatever that number is, pk. 64 plus 289 equals x squared. 353 is x squared, square root of 353, about 1800. What is that? What is that? The square root? Yeah. No, no, just the square root. What is this? All of it. All right. Okay. Real quick. Do you see this? Yeah. You see this, right? Do you understand this or not? A square root of three square root. Do you understand that? One side of a right triangle plus the other side, they're called legs, equals the hypotenuse. Okay? So look here. Is this a right triangle? 8 squared plus 17 squared equals unknown x squared. So 64 is 8 squared, 289 is 17 squared, 17 times 17 is equal to an unknown number squared. So I add those together and I got 353. To get rid of the square, you have to square root it. So I square root both sides, and I get x is 353. Okay. And square root. That would be your answer. You wouldn't have to say 18. Now, this is always going to be the longest side, so that makes sense. 8, 17, and 18. Yes, sir. It's harder when they don't give you the hypotenuse. When they don't, sorry, they give you the hypotenuse, they don't ask you for the hypotenuse. Because watch, now I'm saying x squared plus, uh, 8 squared plus an unknown squared equals 13 squared. Right? So now I get 64 plus x squared equals 169 minus 64 minus 64, x squared is 105 and then square root. So you have to subtract that on the other side. It's an extra step. Okay? Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to print out a worksheet and we're going to practice it until we can master it. But let's go ahead and do one together before Okay. I want you guys to try Find the hypotenuse. Okay? 